Hello guys, this is Coach B with MasterChess.com and in this video I'm going to go over the English opening King's English variation. This is a very easy opening to learn and it's played at all levels including Grandmaster level. So the opening starts with C4 and here there are two main lines. You would see C5 which I also call it the copycat variation and also E5 are the two main lines that are played here. So let's go through both of these. Let's take a look at c5 first. Here we're going to develop our knight to c3, knight c6, g3, preparing our bishop to fianchetto, g6, same thing, bishop g2, bishop g7, and you can see why I like to call it the copycat variation. Knight f3, knight f6, d3, supporting our pawn on c4, also opening up the diagonal for our dark square bishop castle castle d6 and now rook b1 the idea of this move is to support the pawn we want to start advancing the pawns and attacking the queen side let's say bishop f5 and then a3 we can't push the pawn to b4 right away just because black is attacking that square twice once with the pawn on c5 and once with the knight we're only defending it once so he's going to be able to win that pawn and we won't be able to capture with the rook so therefore we're going to move the pawn to a3 first now if black moves his pawn to a5 to stop us from moving our pawn to b4 bringing another attacker of that square here we're going to continue with bishop to d2 rook e8 knight to b5 and now you can see that opens up the bishop attacking the square b4 so we are going to have three defenders of that square the pawn on a3 the rook on b1 and the bishop on d2 so there will be three attackers and we will have three defenders so we will be able to push the pawn to b4 let's say here e5 then b4 a takes b4 a takes b4 knight takes b4 bishop takes b4 c takes b4 and then rook takes b4 so from here, the way we continue this opening, we're going to put a lot of pressure on black's weaknesses, which are the pawn on b7 and the pawn on d6. You could see we could move the queen to b3. We could bring the other rook over on the b file, harassing this pawn on b7. Um, the bishop can also support on this long diagonal. And you could see all these pieces work together uh, for an attack on the queen side. Coming back from the beginning, let's take a look at the other variation with pawn to e5. Here we're still going to continue in the same manner. We're going to bring our knight to c3. Let's say knight c6, g3. And now there's also two continuations that black can try. He can also fianchetto his bishop on uh, with moving the pawn to g6. Or he could bring his bishop to uh, c5. Let's take a look at this line first. After this, we're going to continue in the same way, bishop g2, knight f6, d3, supporting the pawn, also opening up the diagonal of the other bishop, castle, knight f3, d6, castle, bishop f5, rook b1, again, we want to start attacking with these pawns, right now, black has the bishop and the knight attacking the square before, so we want to bring a little bit of support uh, for these pawns to march, let's say knight to d4, a3, knight takes f3, bishop takes f3, queen to d7, bishop g2. And now when black attacks the bishop on h3, here's where white has to be super careful. Here you never ever want to take the pawn on h3, especially if it's guarded by the queen and the knight is nearby. Because that will lead to a forced mate. If you do take that bishop, let me just show you what happens. After you take it, the queen takes it. Now your king is captive. It cannot run away. And after this, there's not much that you can do to prevent checkmate. If you move the rook to e1, that's not going to help much. As after the knight moves to g4, there's nothing that you can do to prevent checkmate. Right here, even if you try to block the diagonal of the bishop, the queen will simply take the pawn on h2 after you move over queen takes f2 is checkmate and coming back the only way you could prevent checkmate is moving the pawn to e3 and after the knight moves on g4 you'd have to sacrifice your queen here to prevent checkmate from happening and obviously this game is winning for black 
So coming back to this position, you don't, you don't need to worry about that bishop challenging your bishop. If he takes your bishop, you're just going to take it back with the king, and the king will be pretty safe. So here you should just continue with your plan, moving the pawn to b4 and attacking his bishop. After he retreats it, you're going to go continue putting pressure on it. He's going to have to make some room for his bishop, and then you could move the pawn to a5. The bishop will retreat, and again, you're slowly going to attack on the queen side. After pawn takes and pawn takes, let's say he takes your bishop. Like I said, you take with the king. There's nothing to worry about here. The queen cannot come and attack your king because you're just going to take the queen. If the knight comes in front, it blocks the diagonal of the queen. So there's no more attack here or any checkmate threats. So you'll be able to play a game from here, putting a lot of pressure on the queen side. And coming back, if instead of bishop to c5, if black continues with g6, for example, Jankero, his bishop, you're just going to continue the same development. We're going to move our pawn to d3, uh, d6, knight f3, knight g to e7. We're going to castle, he's going to castle, and then rook b1, you can see the same idea. After something like um, a5, for example, we could simply move the pawn to a3, preparing b4. Let's say h6, b4, a takes b4, a takes b4, bishop b6, and then b5 pressure on the queen side you, and you can see in this opening all the pieces work together putting pressure on the queen side the bishop on the long diagonal from here we could develop the other pieces you know we could move the bishop to e3 if we want to support the attack on the queen side the queen could come to d2 or c2 and we could bring the other rook over and also pushing the pawns with the rook behind it uh, for support uh, we're going to be able to put a lot of pressure uh, on the queen side and gaining a good position here. And next, I want to go over two master games that played this variation so you can see how they continued their game after the opening was completed, putting pressure on the queen side. This first game was played in Germany in 1996 by Holfender's Hans against Schilberslag George. So let's go through the position. So c4, e5, knight c3, Knight c6, knight f3, g6, g3, bishop g7, bishop g2, knight g2 e7, castle d6, d3, castles, and rook b1. And you could see this is the same setup as the opening that we went over. And from here the game continued with h6, b4, bishop e6, b5. And this concludes the variation that I went over. So from here, I'm just going to fast forward through the position so you could see how the master continued his game, positioning his places and putting pressure on the queen side. And here's how this game ended as black resigned because if he's trying to keep his queen with let's say queen to e3 uh, checkmate cannot be prevented king h7 and then queen to g7 mate and this next game was played in indonesia in 2011 by grandmaster zao jun rated 2587 against emperando emmanuel rated 2294 so let's go through the position so c4 e5, knight c3, knight c6, g3, g6, bishop g2, bishop g7, d3, d6, knight f3, knight g2, e7, rook to b1, a5, a3, castle, castle, h6, and then b4. And you could see this is where our variation ended in the opening. So again, I'm going to fast forward through the position so you could see how the game continued. Again, it's not important to memorize these uh, moves from now on, but just to kind of get an idea and see how this uh, opening was played at the Grandmaster level.
And this is where the game ended and black resigned due to the fact that he's gonna lose the pawn on c5 and then it's gonna be very hard to prevent white from promoting his pawn on c4. Okay, thank you so much for watching this video and I encourage you to learn this opening and give it a try. If you like my video, please subscribe and don't forget to check out my new website, masteryourchess.com where you can learn, practice, test and master your chess knowledge.